Saturday and welcome to the Connect Network TV. You are watching Major Impact on the CW. I am your host, Carrie Calder, and I'm here with my amazing co-host, Ellie and Aquania. Good morning, ladies. How are you? Amazing. Good morning. Uh, how are you? Fat. Look, I just got done uh, celebrating with my boys. It's Black History Month. I am excited for our jam pack episode. Let's go. And we're kicking things off by celebrating Ursula Burns because she is making a major, major impact in the STEM industry as a mechanical engineer. A whole genius. Mm -hmm. Yes, she was the first female to serve as a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, and that is major. Yes, and what makes uh, her story even more unique is that Ursula started out in a housing project being raised by a single parent. Come on, Queens, we still raise bosses uh, with her siblings, and her mom took extra jobs to make sure she could afford a Catholic high school education, and Ursula later went on to earn her bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. Love it. Mm, mm, mm. That is just so inspirational. And what's amazing, ladies, is that she did not stop there. That same year, she went on to pursue her master's from Columbia in mechanical engineering, and she interned in the summer for Xerox. So as a mechanical engineer through the company's graduate engineering program for minorities, which paid a portion of her educational expenses. Once she completed her master's, she began working full-time for Xerox, working her way through various roles in engineering and management until finally landing herself a position as Senior Vice President of Corporate Strategic Services, which gave her the opportunity to broaden her leadership as she oversaw production. Seven years later, she became the president of Xerox. And just two years after that, she became the chairman of the board. Oh my God, internship you better, work. <laughs> you better go ahead and you know what else? She used that that um corporate benefit to get her degree from her job. Ladies, nugget, make sure you take advantage of those benefits when you have a corporate position to grow your empire. So in 2009, Barack Obama had her lead the STEM Education Coalition, Coalition which is a national alliance for more than 1,000 tech companies in an effort to increase student participation. Love it. Yes, wow. like hashtag internships work because this woman went in as an intern and ends up becoming the president of the company, which yes. leads me to remember um, Condoleezza Rice. When I was working for the government, I remember as Secretary of State, she was like, always be kind to everyone you work with because you never know who they will become. Yeah. So I hope everyone was kind to her because when she became the president, oh, hello. <laughs> hello. That's amazing. I mean, she really climbed the corporate ladder. You know, it just goes to show you can have success in a nine to five, just like you can in entrepreneurship, you know? So um, that's amazing. And, you know, we really do need more student participation in STEM, especially the women. According to last year's statistics, women only make up 34% of those employed in STEM. So we definitely have some room to grow there. That is why programs are so important, like the one Ursula joined for minorities. Now might be a great time to learn how you can support STEM programs because tomorrow is International Women and Girls Day in Science. So we absolutely love that our she is one of our sheroes and we absolutely love it. But ladies, let's transition into some hot topics. So before we go any further, we have to delve into these hot trending topics. So let's talk about female empowerment and let's discuss Miss Tiana Taylor, ladies. The the singer-actress has recently announced that she'll be taking on the role of the iconic Dionne Warwick in her biopic. Not too many details are being given right now, but they will begin filming in March. I'm super excited. Have you ladies heard about this? You know this what? I think I saw a post on it. So this is exciting. I definitely feel like Tiana will slay this role. Like she's got the body for it. So pretty. <laughs> I'm eagerly waiting. She's been in a lot of popular films lately, so I'm yeah. excited to see when this comes out. Yeah, things seem to be getting a little messy between the two. She filed for divorce after seven years of marriage, citing emotional abuse. Um, reportedly, she exposed his cruel behavior towards her. Oh, no. And she recalls several instances when he appeared to be jealous of her, and she felt she had to dim her light. And men can get in that space of envy and relationships. I don't know, ladies. What 
what do you guys think about this? That's not what a marriage is supposed to look like. Let me just start there. <laughs> look, come on, somebody. That person is supposed to be your biggest supporter, your fan. And so um, I just commend her for recognizing that that's not the support she needs in her relationship. And she is not going to dim her light for anybody. Yes. And it's, it's just sad. You know, it's like things can start off so wonderfully. And then it's like someone just changes. I mean, I honestly thought that would be a couple that would stay together forever. They just look to be so happy. Yeah. So it's definitely bittersweet. But at the end of the day, she deserves the best. Let's transition, ladies, and congrats are in order for Miss Mary J. Blige, one of my favorites. During a recent interview, Mary J. Blige confirmed her much anticipated boot line will be dropping. So, and do y'all see how she be dropping that leg too? The Grammy winning 53 year old is known for her boot aesthetics where her signature dance move where she kicks her legs up and normally wearing some knee high or thigh high boots. Y'all, I'm 45 and I can't kick my leg up that high, okay? So Miss Mary's, Miss Mary's boot game is unmatched. So it's supposed to be launching soon. She said herself will be less than two years. Are you ladies excited? about this mm, i'm excited i'm not i don't really wear boots but i love her developing her brand and it's gonna sell out that's what i know <laughs> i'm here for it. the next entrepreneur that's black and a woman of color and you know impacting the fashion industry i'm here for it that's what i love to see so i want to see these boots i don't know about buying them because i feel short and so knee high <laughs> boots <laughs> might shrink me a bit but they might be cute i don't know let's see on another note um a female entrepreneur making boss moves out there kim kardashian is also the mom of four recently launched her own makeup line called skin by kim makeup now this is a relaunch if you recall she had a makeup line out before named kkw beauty Ladies, what are your thoughts about this? Do you think she'll have some more success this time around? She says this line is more true to her brand with much less bright colors and more natural tone. To be honest, she has a following that no matter what, she's going to make something. Let's let's just be real. She has brand recognition and there are people that no matter what are going to support. Yeah, that's that's about what I have to say too because honestly, <laughs> I feel like, you know, she doesn't need to launch this. I think she should stick to what's working which is the the shapewear and let that be your thing you know i think that it's almost diluting the brand when you just okay. are launching things i don't know that she needs to bring the makeup back i think she should just let that ride but the people are gonna buy anyway so it's another quick couple million for her yeah. quick couple million come on somebody so guys we have to take a quick break but when we come back we will be joined by licensed therapists and life coach to show us how to transform your mindset and reclaim your confidence see you soon hey beautiful people it's major mr this is why i love you and you are watching the connect network tv Cherry, founder of the award-winning blog, Life of a Cherry Wife. If you're looking to follow for mom and lifestyle content, fashion, Latina life, and good vibes, this is the place for you. Head over to www.lifeofacherrywife.com for the latest in these areas. Follow me on social at Life of a Cherry Wife. So welcome back to Connect Network TV. You're watching Major Impact. And guess what? It is Black History Month and all of us got exciting things going on that we want to share with you. So let's start with you, Miss Ellie. What do you have going on? I heard you have a summit coming up. Yes, y'all. So the theme for this year and specifically for this month, Black History Month, is financial freedom. So I am doing my first ever five-day financial freedom summit 
where we will be working and helping you all to grow your business, grow your wealth, and really just set the tone for financial freedom this year. It's time for us to get our finances in order. You know, I always believe that we should not be struggling to make ends meet. Financial freedom is our birthright. And so this summit, this challenge, we'll be spending five days together, really mapping it out and making sure that every single attendee has a plan to be financially free in 2024. What about you, Terry? What do you have going on this month? Yes, I absolutely love it. So all of us have a love for real estate. And let's just be honest, real estate is still one of the number one ways not only build wealth, but to transfer wealth. And so we have an initiative to help 1,000 people become homeowners in 2024. Um, we start off with home buyer workshops, teaching house hacking, and even connecting people to, um, to lenders that lead to lend nationwide. So, you know, you can, we did two things. There's a home buyer workshop that you can invest in and get a roadmap, get the resources and get a plan. So you can actually buy a house, your first house, house hack in the next 30 to 90 days. And we also created a free, how much is it, Terry? Free, a free home buyer playlist for our YouTube. For anybody who's unable to invest right now, there's some free resources to help you actually get there. So that's Terry Kalzer, the credit expert on YouTube. Love that's that. so exciting, Terry. You are creating homeowners and I am creating hotel owners. This here. month, I'm raising money to acquire my fifth hotel. But this time as a general partner, we're purchasing a Holiday Inn in Lake Charles, Louisiana, which is like the Las Vegas of Louisiana. And we Ooh. are going to convert it into a Wyndham Hotel. Wyndham has offered us almost a million dollars in key money incentives, and we are going to get it. So if you yes. want to know more, check out Vester, V-E-S-T-E-R-R.com. That is a platform that Davon Reeves, who's previously been on the show, started to help raise money for crowdfunding efforts for hotel ownership. So check it out, Vesta.com, and help us all become hotel owners. I'm definitely going to check that out. That's amazing. I'm on somebody. So guys, we have to take a quick break because we have coming up next, Miss Shalon Douglas, who's going to tell us how she built her empire, took some L's, and then brought it back even bigger. Coming up next. Hi, I'm Ananda Lewis. I help women thrive. <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at I'm Ananda Lewis or on my new app, Elixir, available in all app stores right now. And you're watching the Connect Network. Hi, I'm Jess DeFeo, and I am a social media coach for women entrepreneurs who know they are on a mission to change the world with their business, but are struggling with how to market themselves authentically to their ideal client on social media. I can help you go from overwhelmed and confused on what to post to creating effective and impactful content that converts your followers into customers. Head to my website to grab your free course, Instagram 101 for Business, and learn the strategies I use to grow my business in just six months. creator London the Bridge Knightson and I have new music out yes go now to wherever you stream and listen to your music and search London Knightson L-U-N-D-O-N-K-N-I-G-H-T-E-N you'll love my new take on classic gems the closer I get to you as well as get into the sexy holiday spirit with my version of all I want for Christmas your girl just booked the movie too so catch me Saturday giving hot juicy tea on the Connect Network TV on the C. what's up it's your girl Tisha Campbell you will see me soon on the J team with Miss Jojo Siwa playing a villain. Mm. And you are watching the Connect Network TV. Welcome back to Major Impact. Right now we have entrepreneur, film producer, and creative venture investor and the owner of Kodaz Boss, Shalon Douglas. Hi, Shalon. Thank you for stopping by. Oh. We're excited to have you, love. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, so let's dive right into it because you have an amazing story. So you have been working since the age of 13. You better go ahead, Queen. Can you <laughs> tell us how that journey, how you transitioned into entrepreneurship? Oh my gosh. It started when I was come fresh out of high school and I really didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. And I was lucky enough to have the right mentor 
at the right place at the right time. And I said, have you ever heard of real estate? And I'm thinking to myself, real estate, what is that? No. So tell me more. Right. And um, I was fortunate for them to like, let me know that it was a good thing to go into real estate. I wind up purchasing my first piece of real estate at 19 years old, which is unbelievable for a lot of people. Right. Even in today's day today's age yeah. but that's how really truly the beginning it, it it was for me to go into entrepreneurship it was at 19 i had the opportunity to learn what it was like to to get into real estate but not only that do an investment and quickly make twenty five thousand dollars which was a lot of money for me at the age of 19. so that is how my journey started and then from there it just i went into wanting to invest do another investment make more money and then that led into me starting my own mortgage company, lending company, by the time I turned age 23. And I was doing loans in all 50 states. So Love that's it. that was the beginning. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> that is. So you are out there helping people become homeowners. Oh, my gosh. What a yeah. mission. Love yeah. it. To re really be honest, because by the time I turned 23, I still was on my entrepreneurship journey. I had owned um, multiple pieces of property at that time. So from 19 to 23, I wind up owning like apartment buildings, um, having our own single family residence, but I still was working at the same time because of the benefits. And I was afraid to let that go. So I want to say that too. And finally, now by this time I switched, I went, you know, I switched mentors right along the journey. And the, these, I think by this time as the third mentor. So by this time, she's telling me, you don't need to be working. You need to be doing this full time. And I'm like, girl, what are you talking about? I need benefits. <laughs> by this time, I got kids. I got kids. I got a family. <laughs> and so anyhow, she said, no, you are so good at this that you need to do this full time. So I want to stress that I had to get over the fear. That's good. Um, I trusted her. I listened to more of what she told me at the time. And one of the things she told me is write a check to yourself of how much you want to make. Because even though I was owning property and I was still working with for someone else, I still was kind of going through that struggle with the balance of profit and still working and in the benefits and so on and so forth. So I just remember I wrote myself a check for like a hundred thousand dollars, right? That I wanted to see as profit, just you know, without having to spend any bills. Needless to say, that I went from making a hundred thousand to five hundred thousand dollars in six months. Yes. So bars, bars. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Okay, so hold on a minute, because that is huge. And before you explain the aftermath, I think this is a great time to ask you, how did that turn into a passion for financial literacy? Because most people who jump from 100,000 in their mind to 500,000 in reality. So how did you how did you do that? And then, you know, how did that turn into teaching others? So I will admit that um because I started working at 13 and I was around parents who taught me as far as like the independence and being responsible. I was raised as a single, you know, single child. I didn't have any siblings around me. So to answer your question, when I came into that kind of money, I did go party a little bit in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I put it into my business. Because I and, and, me, and I want to go back and say that I quit that job because I was able to pay for my own benefits. And so I went all in to investing into myself. And that's when I started as a two man office and went into I started as a two man office. But quickly within a year, I went from a two man one office to a five office firm in a year. Wow. So I put the money back into myself because it was making more money. And then I was able to hire more people and make more money. I kind of learned along the way, you, if I could say that I'm really being transparent. I liked making money, but more importantly, I loved helping people. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that was admonished to me from my mentor was, don't look at the money first. Look at providing customer service and the reward would come to you in the end. And mm -hmm. by me learning how that money was just making more money. And I, so I quickly was like, oh, I need to keep doing what works. My biggest teacher was when the industry imploded in 2008. Mm -hmm. so 
everything that I had my investments in, I only had my investments into one financial vehicle. And guess what that was? Real estate. <laughs> <laughs> so when the real estate industry took an in, took a dive in 2008, guess what else took a dive? Right. All of my investments. I lost pretty much everything. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was my biggest teacher to financial literacy where I was just like, oh, my God, what am I going to do next? I can't believe like everything I had all my money in is just like going. And not to mention that I was going through a divorce at the same time. So my worlds were crashing down mm -hmm. on me like big time. And for two years and this is sticking to the question about the financial literacy part, because for two years I went into a melancholy state. I didn't know what the hell I was about to do next. I was scared. I didn't ladies. I didn't know how to move, whether to move forward, backwards, side to side. I was just stuck like that for two years, right? Um, having to close my doors, um, going into a deep depression, going through a divorce. Just It was just horrible, just horrible dark days until the epiphany took place. And that was, I wind up looking at my kids one day and realizing they had all this knowledge and just everything I knew about money, investments, starting a company, building it from scratch, just all this education that was locked up here. I looked at my children and said, they have no idea how any of this works. If anything was to happen to me, they wouldn't know, have any clue. And I went into developing a financial literacy, I'd like to call a financial entrepreneur literacy program, because I realized that learning about checks and minuses and how to balance a checkbook was not good enough. That was not going to work. Owning something and making money and learning how money works through ownership is true financial literacy. That's what makes our world goes round with the economy. Listen, we love talking about money and investing on this show. So I want to pick your brain. What do you find is the most common thing people do not understand about money? Uh, they don't understand the difference between good debt versus bad debt. People don't understand the difference between good debt versus bad debt. Let me explain. A person can go and, and apply for a line of credit, credit card, personal loan, or whatever. And one of the things that I was taught very early on is if you go get a loan, don't go get a loan to pay off all your bills. Please say it again, child. <laughs> <laughs> Do not <laughs> go get a loan to pay off all your bills. Yes. Why? Because paying off all your bills is not going to bring a return on any investment back to your bank account. In fact, you're going to get into more debt because that loan that you took out to pay off all your debt, guess what? You're most likely going to run up that debt again, and now you got a loan to pay for it too. Yeah. So you did not leverage that line of credit or that personal loan correctly into good debt. Good debt is when you get access to OPM, other people's money. Yes, getting a line of credit, personal loan, credit card or whatever, that's not your money. So that's still OPM, right? <laughs> Any access to that money, but putting it into a machine, a financial vehicle, that's going to bring about more money for you. So then with that, that money that's coming in that you were able to leverage off of the OPM money, you now have extra money in your pocket that you made for profit. And you can still pay down the debt that you took out in the first place. And that is what we consider good debt because that money that you borrowed actually made you more money. And then you pay to pay back repay back that loan that you did. And hopefully it's a line of credit so that you can keep reusing it over and over again and repeat those methods. So yeah, people don't understand how to position to leverage. So Not true. Yes, I would completely agree with that. I think people are just, you know, they think of debt as something scary, right? Bad yeah. debt, not realizing that most billionaires and millionaires are leveraging debt, good mm -hmm. debt, to make themselves more wealthy. You know, right. it is just the way the game is played. Right. Um, and what would you say to those who, you know, are afraid to invest? We always see a lot of fear in new and upcoming entrepreneurs. What would you say to those people who are being led by fear? Change that mindset. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That mindset. Because I can talk to you till you turn blue or till I turn blue in the face. <laughs> but if I can't, I can't control your mind. And right. that's, the biggest thing. You can either face everything and rise or you can face everything and run. So it's how you choose. And those you break that down as fear. 
either way. So you can either use fear as your fuel or you can use it to run away and not do what is probably the best thing, the best decision you could have ever made if you just change that mindset. So that's the first thing that has to take place. And I say that because um, some folks that, you know, I come across even within my family, Ooh, child, I just be like, really? You 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 coming to me and you asking me for, <laughs> for my advice. I tell you what to do. No, I don't want to do that because they're afraid right. of the outcome. And so fear can either run you or it can either assist you. So that's that's really honestly, you got to change that mindset. And mm -hmm. when you change that mindset, you need to be around someone that knows what the hell they're doing. You are brilliant. Look, we love it how you did that transition. So listen, we are running out of time. But before you go, let's talk business development because many of our viewers are entrepreneurs and are just starting their own business. So we want to get a little bit of insight right here from you. So what does the process of business development look like and how do you help with that? Well, number one, I want to say that I developed an entire platform for creative entrepreneurs that teaches them the game from startup to scale up. They don't have to guess about it. They don't have to try to figure things out. And um, it is turning out to be so nice in regards to learning. Number one, I teach folks, don't focus on trying to go start a business plan because a plan is nothing but it's nothing but words on a piece of paper and you don't know if it's going to work out. Focus more so on your business modeling. And a lot of people are not familiar with business modeling and what that consists of. So that's the first jewel that I want to drop right now. But um, when it comes to business development, business modeling tells you right away if your idea is going to work or not. And so that's something that I learned by being in the tech industry before I got into entertainment, that transition. So that's number one. And then number two, there's only 12 elements that you need to drive a successful startup. But there's there's more to it. There's pillars to this. It's rules, which is my tagline. You'll see everywhere I am. <laughs> and um, yeah, I developed a whole entire edutainment platform that gives the rules. And I've also developed tools for creatives that come into the space that I've created for them. So the tools are for branding to teach, to, you know, give them that, not only teach them, but position their branding, which is also important if you want to stand out amongst the marketplace. So <laughs> that is amazing. We need more of that because we you know we're all women entrepreneurs here as well. And we have, you know, students as well. And I totally agree. People need that guidance. So tell us how can our viewers connect with you and invest with you and check out all that you have to offer? Most definitely. I, you can find me anywhere across social media with my name, Shalon Douglas or Shalon Douglas, quote, code as boss Douglas. Either way, you're going to find me under Shalon Douglas um, okay. across Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, my website, ShalonDouglas.com. And then they lead all of those platforms or mediums lead you to my uh, education uh, platform that I was telling you about, which is called Encompass, TheEncompass.com. So and that's income like income, piss for passive income streams. Of I love that. <laughs> you better go ahead. Thank you so much for all of your valuable insight today, Shalon. We really appreciate it. And guess what? Thank you to all of you out there, to all of you viewers. Remember to go out and empower another woman. It could be a friend, family member, neighbor, coworker. Just understand that your encouragement, your impact can change the trajectory of someone else's life. And so guess what? That's all we have for today. So we will see you next week. Same time, same place. See you later. Bye. You're watching the Connect Network TV on the CW.